Welcome everybody, in this video we're going to be talking about when to take snapshots within your system when you're doing event sourcing. We will talk about what snapshots are, we're going to cover where, when or at which points you can take snapshots in your system and when it makes sense, so basically pros and cons, that sort of stuff. It sounds like there is another point that I was about to mention there, but there isn't one, so let's go. We have the misc file where, you know, I'm just mocking an event. I then have a projection. This is a thing that we're going to be displaying to the user. We then have an interface to represent interactions with a database here. I have two databases that I'm interacting with, document storage and event storage. This can be extended to communicate with other databases as well. Although I only have two database models in this interface, which is pretty much all I need. And then I have a message queue, which is going to be used for well a later example where we just want to publish an event or a message for an event driven style architecture. Starting with a simple API, you make a request to an endpoint and you want to get some data. So we inject our database into the handler. We then want to query our database for all of the events and we want to rebuild a projection using these events using the technique discussed in the previous video. So we're going to see something like this, where we just take all of the events, we aggregate it onto a new projection object, and in the end, we have a built projection out of all of the events. And this is perfect. This is what you want to do. This is super simple. Get me events, build a projection, job's done. When you're going to be pulling out millions or maybe even thousands of events, this is going to get slow, potentially, maybe not, you need to measure. But basically, as soon as this is getting slow and you have a lot of events that you're working with, you want to take a look at snapshotting. Snapshotting would essentially be a caching technique where at some point we do build this projection model, we save it in the database, and then when we want to display this projection to the user, we just query that cache. We don't need to rebuild it with all of the events if we want to make sure that it is up to date. We only need to grab the events that are happening past the creation of the projection, and that is about it. Let's take a look at what a stale snapshot will look like. We will bring in a stale endpoint, and then we're gonna query for the same document that we would have built from this same ID. However, we just query the document. We, we query the already pre-built thing, and we're not applying new events to it. So since the building or since the production of this projection, if any new events occur, we ignore them. We work with what we have in the cache. And that is essentially a stale snapshot. So if you have ever touched caching, you know what snapshotting is, you're just caching the view model. And the one that we're looking at here is stale. Sometimes your requirements will require you to work with a live model instead of a stale one. We'll copy the endpoint and we'll refer to this one as a live projection example. At this point, again, we're querying a projection and we're wondering, is this stale or not? We don't know. For this, we will need to see if there are any new events past the version at which this projection has been created. At this point, you want to do something like this, where you go to the events, again, you query the same document, so you're using the same ID, and then you're using the version that your projection got stamped with. I don't have this version, so let's go ahead and just create this version real quick. It's just an integer, something that's present on the events, and it's just a counter that is going up with every new event that you write. So we have our projection, and we have all of the events that happened since the projection was created. If we do have any events that happened since the projection has been captured, we do the same thing as we've done here, but instead of supplying a new instance of a projection, we already use the one that we stored in the document storage, and we append those events to this projection. And this is where you can start asking the question, okay, when do we actually save the projection to the document storage in order for it to be up to date or available, how do we choose it, which version do we save, do we save it every single time we write new events. You have all these times, places, points uh, in your application where you can write the snapshot to the document storage. Where is the correct or preferable place and for which reasons. Let's take a look at the first scenario where we will take this live endpoint and it will be a live read through. We essentially read to the cache, it's out of dated, we then go to the source, we create an up-to-date version of the projection, and before returning it to the user, we just go ahead and insert it into the document storage. This is not the worst possible thing that you can do, however, this approach, I would say it is not good at all. It looks very simple in this situation, and trust me, your projections are going to get a lot more complex than a single object, and if you detect that your projection is out of date, you will most likely need to go pull multiple event streams for multiple entities in order to aggregate it into this 
a little bit more complex projection. So this insert or this updating of this projection process is going to look a little bit more complicated than just getting all of the events that happened past a certain point for a single entity and appending them onto this document and just reinserting it. Additionally, it is the query side updating the cache. You know, it's not really going to change what you're reading. However, if you have a lot of reads, this is potentially going to happen more than once. It is unneeded CPU cycles. Just don't put it here. It's not good for performance. And just generally as a takeaway, you can think of this as not a very practical approach just because my projection is super simple. It looks like, oh yeah, why not just do this? With the real world view models that you will need, it's not going to look as simple as this. With the previous approach basically being trash, we want to take a look at this next approach where basically saying, right, we know when we're going to write new events. Well, let's just recreate the projection at that point. At that point, we can also guarantee that we're going to do it once. Unlike in the previous example, we could be updating our projection or snapshot multiple times. So we still get our projection. Then inside the command, whatever new events that we need to append to the storage or that we have generated as part of the command, we also just want to go ahead and append it to the projection. Once we have updated the projection, we are also adding it as a document under this ID. I know we already store it and this should probably say update or a better operation name will be upsert where we either update it or insert it if it's not there. Notice that upsert doc and append events these aren't asynchronous. We are batching an operation where we are recording the events that we're going to save to the event store and we're recording the document. And again, there can be other databases, but we're basically building up a batch operation and we want these to be written in a single transaction. So finally, after we've said what we want to write, we go ahead and do a batch update on the database and return whatever you need from the command. This approach is closer to the simpler side and I would say this is what you want to aim for. However, same as with the previous examples that we have already covered in this video, I did mention that your projections are sometimes going to be a little bit more complex. Same as a projection can be reading from multiple event streams for multiple entities, there can be many projections that depend on an event stream. Sometimes it's not going to be as simple as get one document, it's going to be a little bit more complex potentially, closer to get me three, 10 documents. So depending on how many projections you need to update, this process right here may take up more computational resources and may make your command run longer than it should be. This is where you need to measure, you need to test, you need to understand, okay, if I'm updating the description of this document, how many other entities potentially do I need to upgrade? If the answer is one, just do it here. If the answer is, well, potentially 100 in a year's time, potentially 200, you may want to take this next approach. The next approach that we're going to talk about is basically doing it asynchronously. We've identified this part as being, well, performance impactive. So we just want to go ahead and cut it out. We have our new events, we want to append them, and then we save them. Something somewhere some kind of process which is running asynchronously needs to find out that you have written new events to the database. And this is where the queue comes in. So for each new event, you just go ahead and send it somewhere over there for something else to process it and update your snapshots. This asynchronous approach, which is the process sitting somewhere else and then picking up these new events and rebuilding your snapshots is a preferred approach. When you're dealing with more complex projections and you cannot just rebuild them at the time of when you're recording or writing the event. It could be implemented using a cloud function, a worker service, etc. The possibilities are endless. However, there is a problem with this particular implementation. Let's say we have our events, we save it to the event store here, and then our application crashes. So it explodes, we do not publish these events anywhere else, or the asynchronous process to actually go ahead and append them. What you want to do is you don't want to sort of offload these events or these notifications to the side. You want them to pop out on the back of your database. Everything that you write to the database, your database should be sending some kind of notification or maybe this asynchronous process queries the database periodically or the projections that you've configured it to take snapshots of. 
So the real asynchronous solution looks like this. It looks like as if you're not using snapshots at all. If you've never used a database to send notifications or essentially have your database call your application, most of the modern databases out there do support this functionality, be it channels, queues, notifications, whatever. Let's quickly recap these approaches. These are your live projections. No snapshots, this is your preferable approach. Remember, snapshots is an optimization technique. Optimization means accidental complexity. Accidental complexity is basically, now I have to go create a database or I need to involve a new data model. I need to create something somewhere and I need to create that place. I need to remember that something is there and it's extra work. Avoid snapshots if you can. This is probably should have been the first words I've opened this video with, but they are here, okay? So maybe I'll leave a comment, whatever. At this point now, we know that asynchronous projections are actually preferred. When you're creating complex projections or many of them, having these sort of endpoints where you're just querying a stale or a cached version and just building your application to be able to work with a stale thing can also be the preferred approach. So try to keep your endpoints simple. Or when you absolutely need to work with a live projection, just, well, make sure it catches up with the latest events. Having this rolling update of your projection as you're reading from your backend, uh, this is a no-no, do not do this. I would not recommend this, don't. Next one is updating your snapshot as you're writing events. As long as it happens in the transaction and you're not impacted by the performance of updating these projections, very reasonable approach. The next approach is the unpreferred asynchronous approach where you're saving your events to the database and then on the side, you also put them down the queue. The worst case scenario here is that the asynchronous projector or snapshotter is going to miss some events and well, your snapshot is going to be a little bit wacky. Anything can happen to this queue component, it can go down. And if you're doing this publish message to the queue as a transaction with saving the event to the database, that component goes down, your writes start failing, and well, it's just not a good situation. The final preferred approach is you just write your events as if you're not taking snapshots, and then there's gonna be a component somewhere on the side which is going to take those snapshots for you, and it's going to get notified through your main storage. So the story goes pretty much like this. Do not use snapshots if you don't have to. If you have to, it's okay to try to make your system work with stale ones. And in places where you actually need the up-to-date live version, go for that version. As long as you're not going crazy with projections all over the place and your event writing command isn't taking a long time, it is okay to just update that projection as you're writing the event in the same transaction. Finally, when this becomes a burden, just do it asynchronously, do it with the idea that your command is going to look like as if there are no snapshots because they're gonna happen somewhere on the side without relying on the process that is actually saving the events to the database. This is it for this video. Thank you very much for watching everybody. If you did enjoy it, leave a like, subscribe, check out the description, check out my Patreon. I have Saturday morning class available there. Nobody signed up yet. It's essentially a one-on-one -on -one session at the moment. If you do buy it, sounds like a pretty good deal to me. Go ahead and check it out. Ask questions if you want to know more about it. Discord links and Twitch links are also in the description. Go ahead and join those. As always, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in my other videos.